I can't believe it. Almost 60 degrees outside in February in Michigan, February 21st. Joined by former Wolverine Jim Scarcelli. How about it, Scar? It's like spring has sprung. We know that's not the case, but for one day, and it happened, I don't know, about two weeks ago. It was pretty warm as well, and that was awesome. But it puts a smile on your face when the the sun comes out in February, you know? Hey, people from around the country, you know, 60 degrees is no big thing. But you're up here in Michigan. You know, we, we appreciate a day like this, man. Get the windows open a little bit. But, Danny, I'm just fired up, man. Fired up. You know, I look at the little things. I watched. We had a little clip of uh, Sharon and Scruggins and, and Wink at the basketball game. I saw it on our website. I saw those three dudes walking into the Michigan State, Michigan basketball game. And I was thinking, you know, if I'm a recruit and those guys walk into my living room, that's an impressive bunch. That's an impressive crew. You got the, you know, the, the Joe Moore winner, offensive line coach, who's now the head coach. You got Scruggins, who played in the NFL. He's coached in Scruggs. Scruggs played in the NFL, coached in the NFL. And then you got Wink, 20, you know, whatever it is, 10, 20 years in the NFL, 10 years as a coordinator. That matters, man. Those are three impressive dudes. I remember Denny as a high school recruit. I, 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 Gary Moeller, Lloyd Carr, and my position coach, Mylon Vuletich, they came to watch me play basketball as a senior in high school. It matters, man. Those were three impressive dudes. And when I see our crew that we're sending out that are going to be going to these high school basketball games or recruiting these kids, uh, I have a lot of confidence, man. My confidence level is high. That is good to hear. So we've got a few different things that we wanted to touch on. I like the opening remarks. Quarterback is top of mind for everyone thinking about Michigan in the spring. We'll get thoughts from Scar and what he thinks about the signal callers in the spring. Also, we will have uh, Scar identify a future star or two on this Michigan football roster. But we will begin with a little bit of what you're talking about there. Transition from Jim Harbaugh from H to M, from Harbaugh to Moore. And here we are. It looks like staff, they got to go through that vetting process, which is a good thing, as we have seen over the past few years. So if it takes a little longer until you officially have their picture up on the website or whatever else, you have to go through and dot all those I's and cross the T's. I'm in favor of that until you get them all out there officially. But the presumptive staff is in place. And uh, what about this? The people had talked about continuity. Does it, it feel like continuity from uh, Harbaugh to Moore there when you look at it? Yeah, I think I th- listening to Sean Moore and, basically, and seeing who he's hired on defense, you know, the continuity is there schematically, system-wise, structurally. And that was, that was some of the, the, the sweetest words to my ears when I heard him talk about the same things I was saying. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is so important. You put your ego aside and you say, I, I'm going to run what we ran. I'm, I don't I don't need to put my stamp on anything. And uh, but, yeah, you know, Danny, there's there's players. You know, you look at the guys on defense. That is a totally cleaned out defensive room. You know, they had relationships with those guys. So there's some mental guy, mental hurt, uh, you know, transitioning there. Uh, you know, you had good relationship with these guys. They recruited you or they were your position coach for a few years. And it's hard, man. And it's um, it's a transition. And the players have to get that confidence in the coaches. The coaches got to evaluate these players. But so you got new coaches, Danny. I'm just going to start on the defense. You got new guys, but the, stru- the, the, the structure is going to stay the same. I firmly believe it. And that's what makes it easy from a continuity standpoint. Okay, there's different guys preaching the language of our defense, but they're going to use the same terminology. That, that, that is so important. Terminology is huge. So when McDonald got the job, he came in and established a system. 
He blew up the Don Brown system. So now he's got to start talking about terminology. What do they call these stunts? What do they call these alignments? What do they call these schemes? It's like a different language, Danny. You went from Don Brown speaking German, and now you're speaking Chinese. And it's just you got to be on the same – because that's how you have mental mistakes with, when there's com termination, terminology communication problems. So McDonald would have established, I have to believe, the same terminology he used under Wink with the Ravens. So he established the terminology. This is what we call this front. This is what we call this stunt. This is what we call this coverage, blah, blah, blah. So Minter gets the job. You got to believe he's going to use the same terminology. It doesn't make any sense. So it doesn't make any sense for uh, that they would have used anything other than what Wink established. So that 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 is huge with continuity. Okay, and now you got some different guys teaching it. I went from Bill McCartney to Gary Moeller. We didn't change any terminology as a defensive coordinator. Change nothing, you know. So. Um, my confidence level is really high there. I think structurally, Denny, I think I think we can do it like, like Minter in that he's a walk-around defensive coordinator. He doesn't have a position. They're probably going to have Scruggs coach the front five just like Elson. This is my guess. I, I bet you it's going to be the same way. Scruggs will have the front five, the three inside guys in our base, the two edge guys, but he'll have a real good analyst with him the way Elston did. So they, he, that's a, a lot of responsibility. When I played, we my position coach, we had the, he was the edge coach. That's all he had was two positions. And then there was another coach for the three inside guys. But they've done it with now with these analysts. They don't need as many coach, you know, whatever. They do it that way. Yeah. And then the inside guy, uh, Jean-Marie, that's how you say Jean-Marie? Jean-Marie, yeah. Jean-Marie. He'll, he'll just have his two inside guys. And then Morgan will have the whole secondary. And that's the way it's been for a lot of guys like that. I, I liked it from a, a – I liked having my secondary guy have the whole deal. There's a lot more continuity there. It's easier. But terminology be the same. Structural, the defense would be the same. They, the players got to get used to these different coaches, though, now. You know, it's like you work for Fithian. He wants this, this, and this. Or you work for Minter, and these things are important to him. And then it, it, it's not going to be huge differences. Okay, because I think these guys all believe in the same stuff, but there'll be little tweaks, you know, in what Scruggs thinks is important or how he teaches technique might be a little different than what Elston emphasized. But there's a lot of positives, Danny. I thought about this. There's a lot of positives to having played for two different guys, too. You can pick up some of the best stuff from what Elston taught and how he believed, you know, technique blah, 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 was was taught. And now you might pick up a few other things from Scruggs. So there's, you know, there's an upside to some of this in, in some ways. Yeah, I always wondered with the sweet spot, and I mostly thought about it with, with quarterbacks in the NFL, you'd see a guy come in and then he would go through the entire year and then would be training camp the following year. And you'd always hear him say, well, yeah, we had to completely learn everything else. And we had to completely learn the system where now I'm just getting comfortable with the terminology. And I always thought, okay, yeah, I know you're going to a completely different coach and you're going to a different system here, but can't you keep some of the, the uh, familiarity? So it doesn't feel like you're relearning everything. So there'd be some stuff there. And when you have the success and why would you come in and, you know, start turning it all over when you've got guys and they've had that success. So I like what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. It, it makes, it makes sense to me. Don't, don't, don't change too much up there when you're coming to terminal. Yeah, I firmly believe that. And a couple other things, I was listening to some of Wink's thoughts. I listened to some of his clinic stuff and, you know, it's a lot of the same, it's the same things we've been hearing from Minter and McDonald, you know, organized chaos defensively. That's what they want to do. You don't know what Michigan's going to do. He, he used this term. He said all 11 players on Michigan's defense are potential blitz players. And what have we seen from McDonald and Minter? They'll bring the safety. They'll bring a corner. They'll bring both backers, the edges. You know, we, we know that. So they're, they're all thinking, you know, so he talks about all 11 potential blitz guys. And that's what we've seen the last three years. And he starts with the number one thing that, that, 
was the foundation of what I always heard as a, as a, as a player at Michigan was stop the run. We're going to stop the run. That's Don Martindale's number one thing. We're going to stop the run. We're going to make you one dimensional. What have we heard the last three years? We're going to stop the run. What have we done? We've stopped the run. That's how we beat Ohio state. You make them one dimensional. So that's all, that's all just beautiful music to my ears. When I hear the founder, you know, the mentor to McDonald and to mentor, you know, speaking that stuff. Uh, he talked about defensive players being positionless. And what have we seen from our defense? He moves guys all over the place. He'll move our edge player over as, as a three technique on certain blitz situations. And he'll move guys all over the place. And it's, you know, and he, and he, and he talked about, again, talked about week to week being a different team, being the difference, you know, just because you defended Maryland one way in a certain formation, it doesn't mean you're going to defend UCLA in the exact same formation or in the same, you know, he, so he, he's a real believer in, in change, but you got to do it without making mental mistakes. So, you know, that, that kind of continuity is what we're going to continue to see. And that's all great stuff. Cause the defense is how we've been winning, man. MMD Michigan means defense. We'll get to the quarterbacks coming up in a minute. I know you've also, you're you know, like, I would think most coaches are an advocate of, you know, really good technique. And uh, you say that a lot. So it'll be interesting to see if we continue to see that with Michigan. The one thing Martindale has got going for him is that he's got the material, he's got the players. So when it comes then to how he works with them during the week and putting out the game plan and getting ready, you feel pretty good about that. And then the experience of being able to look at that call sheet and say, all right, this is what we're going with because this is what we have. Uh, that seems to, again, seems like from the two previous defensive coordinators that they'll be on top of this and that they should have a, a pretty good defense. Remember, everyone, it, it was a surprise, not that in 2021 that they played so well, but in 2022, everybody looked at that and said with the loss of, of Hutchinson and Jabo and Dax Hill, that it was going to be more led by the offense and the defense statistically was better in 22. And then they took it even a, a bigger step. They were number one in the country last year in, in points per game. So this thing has been uh, heading upwards, even when it didn't look like they had necessarily the, the, uh, the flat out stars that they had. So uh, yeah, Danny, you, you, you use the word there. You said, everybody scar wasn't talking like that, that we <laughs> same thing as scar is saying. Now this defense we got right now. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason, absolutely no reason it can't be the best we've had in four years or every bit is good. We don't have any, we, we got positions already. There are, there's no guess. The, the only positions where you, you look at our defense and say, cause these are the things coaches think about Cause you, you don't, but I know that our three inside guys, Graham, Grant, Benny, all proven in my eyes, they're all proven. They can line up against Texas. Ain't worried about them. Our two edge guys, Stewart and Moore, ain't worried about. They're proven. They played. They beat Alabama with those guys. Now, inside linebacker, we got the kid from Maryland. He's a proven guy. That's where we, you know, we've got, we're going to have a young guy in there. But our safeties are both back. We got McBurrow and Johnson back. There's no question mark. So if I'm a defensive uh, coach or if I'm a fan looking at our defense, the, the question, though, is how how quickly are these young guys going to develop in the, as the backups? You know, and there's believe me, there's good names out there. Brandt, some of those guys that, you know, the the Eto kid, and some of these. I'm I'm looking to see. Believe me, there's some there's some guys there. They're going to say, "Wow, we got two, we got a couple of good backup edges. We got some new D linemen in here, and uh, that we don't know about." And um, so that's you know, where's the depth? But in other, on another note, Danny. The analysts, my old buddy Mike Mallory is uh, apparently uh, he's all done at Michigan. He was an analyst working with the special teams, he, he, so he's all done at Michigan. And Doug went to uh, with the Ravens, so it just there's going to be a lot of new analysts too, and uh, some of that will come out. But um, and then obviously we're going to have continuity. I, I didn't talk talk about the offense, but you know Sharon ain't changing nothing on offense. I'm anxious to see. You know he talked about wanting to pound and grind. I'm just anxious to see uh, if, if there are any differences and tweaks in what his beliefs are uh, compared to what Jim's were. Smash. I'm 
looking for it as well. I mean, they just have really one player that's coming back, Colston Loveland. So it, it was going to be different even if uh, Harbaugh was there when you take a look at the quarterbacks. And that's what we're going to get to. But let, let me change some things. And, and one is there, there's no change here. Uh, the message is the same. Join the Maze and Blue Review today by going to michigan.rivals.com. Everything that you want to know, the latest with the Maize and Blue, the transfer portal, recruiting, philosophy, football, basketball, it is uh, all there. So if I go back just for one second, in 2021, Michigan beats Ohio State. Aiden Hutchinson looks like he's going to be the number one, should have been the number one overall pick. That was nice that the Lions were able to scoop him up at number two after Jacksonville passed on him. And then David Ajabo would have been a first-round pick. And then Dax Hill was a first-round pick. That is top end talent that everybody except scar in 2022 was saying that this defense would not take a step back scar was on top of it let's as we go to the quarterbacks mark is asking about quarterbacks so how about we use mark as a jumping off point mark is saying that he wants to hear about the three deep quarterback situation he thinks tuttle has some legs and can run and transition a full-on RPO offense with multiple quarter se- quarterback sets to get Orgy and Denigal brought along smoothly. How about that? Let's start there. Well, okay, there's that, that's the big question, man, because I, I firmly believe that the 10 other position groups are really, really solid for Michigan offensively. I have great faith in, a, in what we have back coming back, uh, offensive line, tight ends. Running backs, receivers. Okay, here, here's where I see our offense with quarterbacks. Tuttle is a guy who I saw. I remember he did some good things when we played against him when he was at Indiana. He's a seven-year kid. He was a highly recruited kid. He was a four-star kid. He runs. He's athletic. Oh, is he three-star, Danny? No, I put a four finger. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. What I like about all three of these guys is they're athletic. I don't want statues. Okay, I want guys that can move. So all three of them are athletic. Tuttle has a whole lot more game experience. Denny, here's what I'm thinking about Tuttle. I don't think he would have came back for a seventh year to sit on the bench. He must feel really confident about his situation. That's just what I'm thinking. The kid must feel really good that he's not going to, you know, hold the clipboard and do what he did last year. Otherwise, the kid says he wants to be a coach. So – Start with that. He must feel real confident based on what he's seeing in that quarterback room, uh, how the coaches talk to him, whatever. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm just trying to play Columbo here and put it together. Why is this kid coming back for a seventh year? He ain't doing it to, to, to hold a clipboard if he doesn't think he's the guy. That's that. Alex Orgy, I want to see that kid throw the ball, and, man, we got something special there. Hard to defend, uh, you know, with his ability to run the football. And then the coaches indicated, you know, uh, the, the quarterback coach indicated he's got a lot of faith in Denigo. He's really improved. So here's the way I see what we have at quarterback. Let's let's just say it's orgy, and he, the coaches have confidence that he could throw the ball. And he's because you you got you got to defend everything when orgy's in the game. It's not going to be like last year where you just put them in. You know they're going to run the ball. So he has to show the coaches he can throw the football with confidence, throw all the routes, do all the things, and have the run game in there. The downside of him being your starter is what makes him so effective is his ability to run the football. And you're going to have to run him. Okay, and that makes you susceptible to injury. So Orgy is your starter. You're going to run him. you got to run him. But – you know that when you live and die with quarterbacks that can run, you better have two and th- two and three other guys ready to go, which we have. So that's why, okay, if Tuttle's your guy, I think if it's Denigal or Tuttle as our starting quarterbacks, if it's Denigal or Tuttle as our starting quarterbacks, Alex Orgy will get a – there will be a huge package for him either way, in my opinion. I would. I would have a 20% of the offensive snaps he would be in the game. That's me. Because I would have that. That's a problem package for me to defend. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I really honestly have no idea which of those three guys they're going to pick. Um, but I like the fact that they can all run. I like the fact that if it's if it's two of them, we have uh, we have an orgy package that's really tough to defend. 
And um, they didn't, you know, the fact that he came back for a seventh year and the fact that they let him come back for a seventh year, Denny, that says something too. They don't want a guy coming back, eating up a scholarship for a seventh year if they think they can get a better transfer out there. So that tells you from the, something from the kid's standpoint. It tells you something from the coach's standpoint. Because I don't want to bring some guy back for a seventh year to hold a clipboard. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm having confidence. They, they obviously know a hell lot better than we all do. They see them kids every day. But I, I, I think we can win with – and it, we might have to win with all three of them. That might be our approach, whereas we didn't – you know, J.J. Hart, you know, that was it. J.J. was our guy. We didn't run him unless we had to. But these guys are all expendable. All three of them are expendable from running the football with them. Predetermined runs are are in the in the playbook with every single one of them. That makes it hard to defend them. I wish Michigan had last year's schedule this year. It was East Carolina, UNLV, BG, and, and Rutgers, and Minnesota, and Indiana. Instead, they're starting out after Fresno State. They got Texas, and they got USC in their first uh, Big Ten game, and then they're – going to Washington pretty quickly. So these guys are going to be thrown to the fire fast. How do you think that they're going to adjust practice with these guys for 14 years? I used to go to Lions practices and, and there would be a guy that throw the ball around and you'd see Stafford throwing the ball. You could see, man, that guy, that guy always had a good practice. But there's guys that throwing the ball ducks all the time. And you'd think, why is this guy even out here? Well, it was Drew Stanton who didn't throw the prettiest pass, but you'd get him into a game. You get him into the uh, the exhibition season. It made he'd run around. He's making plays. Michigan's got guys that. At very at the very least, they've got a, a big run element, and with Orgy, it might be even run first. So, what do they do in practice? Do, are they are they gonna are they gonna hit him? Are they going to uh, have the orange jerseys on these guys all the time? I, how is that different? When and you'll have uh, you'll have uh, periods where it's live, where they'll be live with the quarterback run, but not much. I would think it would be important with these guys yeah. to see because it's such a big deal yeah. for them. The majority of the time, they'll have a pink jersey on. You don't touch the quarterback, and and you know, and, and they'll know that. Uh, so, but I, you know, I'm looking at some of the predictions by uh, our analysts, uh, you know, Trevor and these guys, and I like uh, the offensive line uh, predictions about uh, what what they're thinking. You know, Al Hadi and Preeb, those are two. Those would be two good guards. It could be every bit as good as Keegan and Zinter. And apparently the coaches have a lot of confidence in Crippen, man, because they talked about him now more. The coaches are talking about Crippen, that he would have started at other schools. So that was good to hear that. And, you know, he's he's a four-year kid now. He's been in the weight room for four years. You think he's hungry? You think he's strong enough? He, we ain't putting no freshman out there, sophomore out there. So, you know um, – that's uh, that's good stuff, man. So you don't have a pick. You don't think like that you would go in saying that it's oh, orange. Yeah, I didn't even answer your question. As far you mean, as far as uh, the, 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 how you structure your practice with the quarterback. Well, you you answered that one. You said okay. there'll be some live periods. I'm just wondering if you'd give a guess at how. Oh they hell, go. Denny! I tell you, man, it's uh. They're going to have to – those 15 practices are huge. I mean, they're, but they have stuff. They have seven-on-seven seven stuff prior to spring practice. But those coaches are going to be looking at these kids, and they're going to be analyzing them and um, looking at their throws, looking at their mental mistakes, the ability to run. You know, you, who's the last guy you want to defend? You know, you ask Wink Mark, Martindale at the end of 15 practices, says, which of these three guys do you not want to defend? That's a good answer to your question. You know, which guy is can throw it, can run it, gets him in the right play, uh, you know, secures the ball. I want the guy to secure the football, number one. Don't be don't be throwing it to the other guy and, and fumbling it. That's so huge. Well, that and, last yeah, year. I, as far as predicting it, I, I, I can't do it. I, I think I'd be, you know, do they want experience? Because, the, you know, the, the guy they start, you know, you'd think that that against Fresno because the, the – Texas is game two. So you'd like to think that the guy you start against Fresno, you're getting him ready for Texas. 
Yeah, last year it wasn't good. I know it was just one of 15 practices, but it meant a little more because it was a spring game and you had fans there. But but Davis Warren and Jack Tuttle both showed some nice, but they threw the ball to the other team, uh, you know, the, the defense a number of times. They were turnover machines. I think about, you know, Orgy and Denegal being able to put the ball on the receivers. Are mm-hmm. they going to be able to do that when, you know, the – that's going to be well, part of it. it well, you just think about the, the strengths. We know it. O- Orgy, I don't know if he's a, a once in a generation type athlete, but uh, Kirk Campbell was was talking about his athletic ability. We, we've seen so he's he's um, squatting close to 600 pounds when he's uh, in high school. Uh, the ability to, to, to jump is off the charts. He's, he's throwing the ball down on the basketball court. Those are good, but he mentioned those key performance indicators that that Michigan uses on on everything that they're doing. And Orgy's the best at Michigan since he's been in here. So you're, you're talking about a real special athlete. How much uh, accuracy he's going to have to be better than fifty percent than he was in high school. But if you're thinking about him just you know, being a seventy uh, percent guy, he doesn't have to be that. Meanwhile, Denigal. Campbell said had made, taken the most strides since last year. So how he's throwing the football and and then and Tuttle has I, th- I think people saw him running and you saw his size six four. And, uh, he can throw it and run and he's and he's got the most experience out of those guys. And I don't count Davis Warren out. Kid came back from leukemia in high school and so you know he's a dark horse in the mix too. And uh, a true freshman, Jaden Davis. I hope that he's not going to be the guy that you're thinking about in game one, or you've probably had some injuries or uh, something else going on. But so I, I would put it at a, at a four quarterback race. As I like. uh, it, it's, it says something though, Denny, when they don't mention the kid's name, I, I hate to tell you, I think it does. I think it does matter, but th- let's never forget this. We won a big 10 championship with Cade McNamara. Okay. You know, uh, 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 is he much better than what we got? He's not as athletic as any of those three. So that's the sign of a good program. That's the sign of a good system. Okay, when you can win with average talent, when you have a, you know, this this was the Schembechler philosophy, man. Let's have a great run game. Let's play great defense. Let's not live and die on the ability, the, the way one guy performs on Saturday, you know. So that's what we want to do. We want to have a great run game and uh, a great defense and not live and die on this guy and, and, and keep the pressure off him, you know. Great points. I'm with you on that. We'll take some of the questions, if you have one for Scar, before we get to the the future stars and anything else that is top of mind here. Calvin's talking about Denical. He said he looks good in the pocket and can zing it, but so did Joe Milton. It'll be an interesting quarterback race. I would jump in on that. And the thing that I saw from Joe Milton, certainly he had the arm and he, you know, he's got an NFL arm. But when it came down to being able to pick up a yard, Joe Milton, I don't, I don't think he it was willing to pay the price, lower his shoulder, even though he was 6'5 and, and, and built like uh, Josh Allen. He didn't run the ball like Josh Allen. He couldn't get you a yard if you needed it. And he reminded me of a little bit of a former Lions quarterback back in the day, Scott Mitchell. It was like he was tensing up when he had to run and if he had to really try to lower his shoulder. Denico, we have seen run a little bit, and at 6'5", he will lower his shoulder. So I, I liked what I saw from him. Uh, that's the difference, I think, between Denico and Milton. Milton shied away from the physicality of the game where it doesn't look like Denigal does that. That was my read on him in the limited time that I've seen. Yeah. Like I, like I said, I like all three can run, you know, Denny, this is the time. He, this is the, the stuff I, I think about what Sharon Moore is doing. You know, it's, I called it putting the puzzle together. You know, he's putting the puzzle together, man. He, he's getting his staff together, getting his players, you know, who's in, who's out. Do we need this guy transfer here? NIL, this guy's thinking this, that, or whatever. And it looks like Sharon, I, I had it on my notes that he's putting the puzzle together. It's some things that I, I just really, really like, man. You know, his, his coaching staff, I, I cannot ask for a better coaching staff. If you'd have told me we're going to lose Jim Harbaugh 
And we're all kind of, okay, that's kind of, we didn't want that, but we got Sharon Moore and we got this, these, these, these defensive coaches. We ain't, we ain't, listen, those guys were great coaches. We lost on defense, but man, look at the people that we brought in. Look at the people Sharon brought in. And you know, this says a lot about Sharon Moore as a leader. And I've talked about this, man. You know, you people want to get all excited about the three games that he won. That's not as impressive to me as this coaching staff to get Wink Marknell to work for you. That one, you know, this guy had a lot of options. A lot of these guys had options. He got the guy to leave Tennessee. You know, he had a good job at Tennessee, the linebacker coach. So this says a lot about our head coach that good coaches want to come work for you. And we're not seeing a bunch of guys leaving. Now, we, we saw our safety leave, Denny, but he was going to be a backup behind. He didn't think those two guys were coming back, you know, Moore and Page. If one of them would have left, I guarantee you he ain't in the portal. So he probably didn't want to sit the bench for another year. He was thought one of them guys were going to leave. So I just want to throw it out there that Sharon is putting the puzzle together, and I, and I really like it, and uh, it's impressive. A scar guarantee. I don't get those every day. Uh, I like it. Mark wants you to discuss receivers, the strategy. He says it seems the NFL is going to possession receivers. St. Brown and Puka Nakua over big. The top might be a Michigan strategy. Now, I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying here, but what do you think? You know, I, th- I think there's a need for both. You know, you got the big, <clears throat> the big Mike Evans at, t- at uh, Tampa. You know, how do you cover that guy? <clears throat> you know, the big six five guy. There's still a there's still a, a place for those guys. And then you like the Roman Wilsons and the uh, St. Brown guys. So, you know, it, it's probably kind of good to have one or two of each of them on your roster to give matchup problems. You know, I like the I like the idea of having a guy like. Uh, you know, Mar- Marvin Harrison uh, playing for the Wolverines, six foot four. So, yes, there's strengths and weaknesses of both. I'd like to have both types of guys on our roster. Yeah, and Nakua's is not like he's five ten. He's he's six two. What's jumped off from him? He just plays a a physical. He's he's more like a tight end playing wide receiver, and just what you've seen from him. He's ready for the physicality. As soon as he catches the ball, he didn't know that he wouldn't have been drafted where he was. It's a great pick by the by the Rams. So, yeah, I, I think St. Brown reminds me of Samaj Morgan. Michigan does have Tyler Morris. Is it, they don't have the big, and they they looked for one from Indiana and one from Wake Forest. If there were any clues when the transfer portal was over, they brought at least one of those guys in, but they were interested in two guys. And the thing that stood out was just the measurables. One was 6'4", and the other guy was 6'5". You know, Danny, the, the, the thing that I know is it, when I look at Michigan defending Michigan, when you have Roman Wilson in the game, you've got jet sweep. You've got reverses. You know all the stuff we did with Roman, you know? You, you, don't, you, you, can't, make, you can't do that with Mike Evans, the kind of big, tall guy. You know what I mean? He doesn't give you that. He gives you that he's going to out-jump guys. So there's a lot more that you have to defend when you have a guy like that on the field that you have to honor all that stuff, you know, jet sweep and the reverses. And, we heck, we led Roman through from the opposite side of the field on isolations, on linebackers. You know what I mean? You can do that with, with the fast, athletic guy. But, Danny, I'm, I'm just want to say this. I'm – I'm going to go to practice when they when we get spring ball started, but I am really interested in all these big-time recruits that we, we got last year, year before, that we ain't heard about them. You know, this big kid Pierce, I know they're high on Pierce and Etta, and maybe I'm screwing up some of their names, but there's a whole bunch of good players there that are waiting in the wings, man. A lot of good offensive linemen waiting in the wings. Uh that are going to get a shot and they're going to, you know, they're going to battle for those, those two deep positions on defense. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And again, don't, don't panic if we haven't brought transfers in on defense, because our coaches are saying, you know, these kids are available. They looked at a couple guys we didn't get, but that could also, again, I've said this, that can also mean they got a ton of confidence in the freshmen and sophomores that are on our roster that they feel comfortable with 
being uh, working in as backups for this upcoming season, eventual starters. And here is Scar talking about practice, not the games, practice. You're talking about practice. And and I like when you talk about practice. I know some people, uh, it, it, they, they talk about practice and they don't like it. Alan Iverson didn't like talking about practice. The soccer coach over in England that's on the Apple TV, he doesn't like talking about practice. But Scar, I like you talking about practice. And Roderick Pierce and Edo Etta, you nail those guys' names and seeing how they practice when you go will be something that we'll be looking forward to you talking about. Yeah, because, you know, Danny, our program is established now, whereas, you know, when we were struggling, you got freshmen playing, man. When you got freshmen, true freshmen playing, that's a problem. That's a problem with your recruiting. That's a problem with your program. That shouldn't be happening. And our program is not – we're not counting on freshmen to get in and contribute anymore. Those days are over, okay? So there's a lot of really good players there that are waiting in their wings. They know what Michigan is about now. You're probably not going to get much clock as a freshman, and that's okay. And uh, but they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be swinging this spring, man. They're, they ain't they ain't sitting in. You know they're gonna be fighting out there for some clock. So I'm looking forward to it, and I I, I just think there's some good ones there. So I'm against a a quarterback rotation or a quarterback split. Harbaugh two years ago, he had a non-conference slate. He couldn't come out and say, yeah, we got a bunch of easy games, so we're going to go with Cade in game one and J.J. game two, and then we'll see. That's what he did. So he had the open – it was a battle royale in the first two games. It worked out really well because J.J. took over and they uh, went undefeated. So it was a great move by Harbaugh. They don't have this luxury this year with uh, Texas, but what if I told you that they would have some kind of 70-30 split? Let's say it was Denigal that won the job, but Orgy is so good running the ball and in short-yarded situations that you get a a, a third and short, uh, certainly fourth and one. You get down by the goal. Uh, the goal line, it's going to be Orgy in there, and it's not going to be Denigal. Do you like that? Does it tip your hand too much? If you're and is it is it hurt Denigal if he's in there between the twenties? Oh, what about it philosophically? What I, do you think? I, I think it's totally good. You know, I, that's why I like I like Har. You Jeff, ran that. You you play. You coach that. Way. I get you it. Je- Jeff Brom is a coach I really respect a lot. He was a former quarterback. He played three the year they had that good team two years ago. You know, he he played three regularly. You know, the big slow kid, the guy that can run, and he played another one. So. Listen, if uh, I, I like I said, I think Orgy is going to be in the game, period, regardless if he's a starter or not. And, and I see nothing wrong with that because it gives me a lot of problems defensively. You know, if Denigal's the starter, I know what he can do, but I also always have to prepare for Orgy. But I, like, like I said, I think w- what's good about this team in the quarterback room, I think regardless of which of those three guys is the starter, I think the coaches are going to be uh, freewheeling and not reluctant to to run all three of them on predetermined runs. You know, like almost have the the orgy the orgy Lamar Jackson package is in every single down because maybe we don't they don't feel they have one quarterback who is like, you know, we got to protect this guy like JJ. Let's go back to the people. Questions. Mark says Barrett and Sainra still seem to be the defensive play callers, and it seemed very important. Who do you see calling the defenses? So important, first? man. It's so important. Uh, you got to have that guy. Trust me, as a former defensive coach, you know, you got to get lined up right. Adjustments, getting the right defense is number one. I don't care how big and strong and how good a technique. Um, you know, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that, that is an interesting question. Well, you know, usually well, a linebacker, though. It's usually a linebacker. I know you said Sainra yeah. still, but it's usually a linebacker. So, yeah. And you know what? You know, Denny, to answer that question, it really says something about a player's intelligence. I, I just, I don't know how else to answer the question. Okay. So, I don't know which of these guys is the sharpest of, of his secondary guys. I don't, I don't know that, but 
you know, if, if Sanistro was that guy, that says something about his intelligence. And if Barrett was that guy, it, it just, it is what it is. There's no way around it. Cause I, I've won and lost games because I didn't get lined up. I didn't have the right kid to get, get us lined. And I've won games where we got perfectly lined up every single down. So it's crucially important. And, uh, that that that's going to be a big question at that inside linebacker position. You know, some of these guys, these young guys we're looking at, you know, who, who's it going to be, man? Yeah, it's in the NFL, they have a green dot. So they're allowed for the communication. And, and because of everything that went down last year with with Michigan and the, the signal stuff, there was a, a thought and a prediction from a lot of folks that after all of this blew over that the college football would be like, okay, let's just get the communication and the helmets. A lot of coaches want to see that anyway. So it would be who has that green dot. Well, the Will Johnson, Macari page and, and uh, Rod Moore, all three of those guys have a lot of experience, but I'll just go when you talk about, and this is just listening to him, how they present present themselves. Ernest Hausman sounds like he could do anything in the world. So, and, and he plays linebacker. It's not sure that he's going to be in there every down, but that would be my early prediction yeah. on who would get that green dot on defense. And if, uh, from there, I would go with Rod Moore. You know, Danny, Rod Moore, Ernest for Hausman. some reason I went brain dead. Our defense, that for some reason I, f- I forgot about him. We have two guys that have started a lot of football games, you know, him and the kid from Maryland. So, we, you know, those are two two positions where there's zero question mark. And then it's just a question of who's going to be the third guy. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you want your safety or your safeties are normally the corners are on one end of the field. You need a guy in the middle of the defense, linebacker, safety, that could get the communication because, you know, everybody can hear him from that position. Uh, you know, to get you line, lined up. I've I've had years as a coach, I didn't have the kind of intelligence at inside linebacker. I had to have an edge player get get us lined up. And, you know, there's times you just have to think outside the box. Outside the box. How about another one from Mark is speculating about Colston Loveland converting to a Devin Funches type role, or is he better as a tight end? Because Funches did move to wide receiver, tight end. So as as it does it matter? No, we want don't. guys, Danny. We we don't want we don't want the, the, the that kind of a you know. I, I'm I'm sorry, but I don't want a funchus tight tight end. I want a tight end that can block because because that's what I don't want to defend. I don't. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I don't want to defend a guy when he's in the game. He's just a receiver. He's just an imposter. He's got an eighty number on. They got tight end in the program, but he don't block nobody. Okay, those guys are easy to defend because I know when he's in the game, they ain't running to him. So I want that guy like Barner. Okay, Barner and uh, uh, what's the big guy in, uh, with the Cowboys? Uh, what the heck's his name? Schoon- Schoonmaker? Cooney and, and, and Barner. Those are the guys you want. Those are Michigan tight ends. And Loveland is getting there. His blocking really improved later on in the year, you know, where they were running, the, they were running to him. So that's what I want in a Michigan tight end. I don't want them guys that just run around and throw the ball I, to them. I don't mind having both. And, and uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's Travis Kelsey, but I, I heard Jake Butt talking about what makes Loveland so good in running down the seam. And he just – he talked about his route running and his ability to get down the field. But then also he's just – he's – with that route running, he pairs it into being able to contort his body – when he's going to make a break on the ball and be able to get open. That reminds me a little bit of when I hear people talk about Kelsey he just has that feel when he's running the route on how to get open and how to position himself. Loveland has that. I didn't even call it special. Yeah. And he's I'm probably being, I'm probably being a little bit extreme because he is a problem. Loveland is a serious problem when you, when you widen them out and force the safety to defend them. Make, that is a problem. I guess yeah, if you were picking your I, all-time NFL team and it got the tight end without hesitation, you just pick Gronk because he's physical and he can well, smash. I, I you know, of course you can, and and I might pick Kelsey and, and others might do too. A little more flash, but and I don't know how many blocks Travis Kelsey. Depends what you what you believe in offensively. You know yeah. what you want to do. You know if you're gonna you want Gronk. So if you're on the goal line and it's fourth and three. 
fourth and in, in one or whatever, uh, you're going to have Kelsey in the game then. You're going to, were you going to run behind him? No. You're going to throw the ball to him. Yeah. So anyway, I understand the strengths of, but I, I see him being doing both. That, that becomes the problem, but he is a, he's a problem when we split him out too. But for us offensively, Michigan, we got, we got to have tight ends that can do both because that's not what we believe in. Okay. So we got to have guys that can do both. You can get away with one, you know, maybe one like that, but. Yeah. And they've got Bredesen coming back. Who's a hybrid, more of a, a fullback there, but Marlon Klein. Yeah. You saw know, him uh, Antoine, uh, Hanson is, Antoine talks about, uh, you know, um, Bredesen is more of a fullback. He plays in the backfield. So again, I, that's one of the biggest questions I want to see when I, when we go watch the spring game is, you know, which tight end is lined up next to Hinton when we need a yard and we got to block down and run our best football play, you know, and move a five technique. Which guy is that? Okay, last year it was Barner. Year before that it was Scooney. Okay, we, is it going to be Loveland? We, we, that's our offense, man. Okay, so, you know, you, you have to have tight ends that can block. I would guess it would be 44. They had two freshmen that didn't play last year and Zach yeah, Marshall. He plays in the backfield. They don't put him on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they do. Nah, he yes, ain't blocking. No, he's not big enough. He's only – we we need a 255, 60-pound kid that can double team with Hinton and, and and move a five technique off the ball like we did with them other guys. That's that's our offense. 6'2", so, 240 is not going to do it for you? Uh, I don't think so. You know, he, he's a good, he's good where they use him. They, 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 he's like a fullback in our offense. Tonelli as a freshman last year was listed at six, five, two fifty one. but you would imagine he'd put a little bit more size. That was as a, as a true freshman. And then Zach Marshall, six, four, two thirty two. So he's a little leaner. Tonelli might be. Yeah, the guy. I saw Marshall. Um, not, a, you know, I saw him last year as a freshman at practice. He's, you know, he's a, he was only a young kid then and he's probably, right bulked up, but he's a good looking athlete. You know, you look at him now, he looks like he's a Loveland kind of kid right now, you know, split him out. But that's a huge question that has to get answered this spring. You know, who can we line up next to uh, big Hinton when we got to block down to run our power or our counter, our counter tray and, and get movement. Hulk Hogan uh, Hanson is in for spring. So could okay, be, him. Well, that's, let's find out which of them guys are going to do it. Cause we got uh, we got the guy from, uh, you know, we've got the guy that was at Massachusetts now coaching the tight ends, uh, Kasula. Kasula. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's his going to be? Uh, what kind of uh, impact is he going to make? Well, Scar, look, you you, you got in here, and uh, and I think some people, because the, the weather was so warm, thought maybe you had a foot out the door, and we're already thinking about – going to, you know, the play some cards and, and, but man, you're ready to get after the quarterback and you're ready to block right now. So that, that was great. So any things that listen, man, listen, there's a lot of good things going on. We, we, we discussed the NIL improvements that Michigan is there. You know, we, we've got great coaches that have gotten hired. Our leader has hired some really impressive staff. You can, you can, in my opinion, we could lose three or four or five of these recruits or some guys leaving before getting the staff right. Okay. That's how important I think the staff is. And we got to get that right. So, and, you know, and I think our, our philosophy is playing out because I guarantee you, Danny, a guy like Stewart, a guy like Moore, Hausman, I guarantee you those guys had a lot of NIL money offered from other people. Guarantee it. And, and they stayed at Michigan because I guarantee you Michigan came up with a little more than just a scholarship. I guarantee you that. Okay. So our money, our philosophy is, you know, maybe we didn't get all these five-star kids, but we got Josiah Stewart back. We got more back, you know, and we got the guys that are already proven. So, you know, that's, that's something, those are good things happening that, uh, that whole, you know, we got these players back. Hey, Double guarantee on this show from Scar. How about that? Not just one guarantee, two. And the second one. You know, okay, you know, we got a question here from Calvin. You know, pre-scorn is the kind of kid, athletically, he's not going to sit down and probably block at the line of scrimmage right away because he's not in the weight room long. But he could give us what Loveland gave us as a freshman. That's a, that's a great point. 
Priest Scorn is a 6'6", hell of an athlete. He can give us the spread out mismatch stuff. Probably not going to be able to block at the line of scrimmage, but maybe Loveland can give us both this year. That would be an ideal situation. Loveland now big enough, strong enough to play at the line of scrimmage. Now we got two big time athletes in the game. That's a problem to defend. Priest Corn is not in for spring, but that does not preclude you from making an impact as a freshman. I think about Rod Moore, who started right away. He wasn't in for spring. Nobody was, I, I should say, nobody. Scar, if, if we were out doing, you'd have said, hey, I, you know, this kid Moore, I really like him. You probably would have said it <laughs> uh, when I say no one, but that was uh, was back. Now, we're going to get to some some future stars on this team. in. So if Scar said that he thought Will Johnson was going to be a future star, I'd say, Scar, Will Johnson is already a superstar on this team. So you're, you're looking for someone. They could have played last year, but they didn't play a lot. But you say would be in the category of a future star. Richard is saying JM. So I think he's talking about Jordan Marshall, the running back uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. He would classify, obviously, a true freshman uh, being a future star. And you, you look at the – the loss of, uh, of Blake Corm. You know, you have Donovan Edwards there. We know that you have Khalil Mullings. It, you have two freshmen last year. One stole the show in the spring game. But, Scar, if I ask you the question, a future star, who jumps to mind? Uh, Pierce, the big kid, the big D lineman. I think he's going to be our fourth inside D lineman. From people I've heard, I've I've heard that they have a lot of oh. excitement on this big kid Pierce. Okay, and then we talked about the running back. I talked about him last year. What's his name again? Ben Hall. Ben Hall. As good as Corum was, this kid is going to do some great things, and we're going to say, you know what? That kid's pretty damn good. Jordan Marshall is going to have a tough time getting on the field. Woo! Freshman. You got Donovan back. You got Mullings, who they have a lot of faith in, who gives you the physical stuff, and he can run all the every every play you can run with Mullings. I like him, and he he gives you the physical stuff. Yeah, and then Hall, I watched that kid as a true freshman last year in practice, and he's an athletic, tough kid moving the pile as an eighteen-year-old. He's going to be special. So Hall, Pierce, Danny, those are my two guys. And uh, but there's a whole lot more out there, man. I'm, I'm, I am gonna really, really. I'm focusing on those edge guys. I want to know who the next Aiden Hutchinson is. Who's the next Ajabo? So when I, when I go to practice, I'm gonna spend some time there. I want to look at these uh, edge guys and w- at the spring game and see who 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 who's what's next, man. All right, I like it. My pick is gonna be over on the defensive side. I'm picking this guy right here. That is number six, Zeke Berry. Well, Danny, he's been there two years now. Yeah. And um, that's, uh, you know, he, he hasn't got a ton of clock on defense. He gets he gets a lot of work on special teams. But he's the type of guy that they may have a ton of faith in. We just hadn't seen it. And maybe he could be the third safety this year, you know, behind Page and Moore. So hopefully – uh, that's what we're seeing, man. That you know, that's what you want at Michigan. That you get, you know, you got to wait around, man. Three years because you have less mental mistakes. You got less physical. He's he's been in the weight room. He, you know, you have less mental mistakes with guys that have been in the system than some freshmen you put out there. They're going to make mental mistakes. I am also going to stay on defense and predict Micah Pollard. Now he was in the same class of Jimmy Rolder. We know Jimmy Rolder was out there before him, but Pollard couple different times listening to Harbaugh go over guys that stood out on special teams. He, he would mention him. Oh, that, well, he, liked, he just liked how he ran. It's always in the mix. Had a nose for the football, things like that. I think uh, Micah Pollard is also going to be a future star. So I got Micah Pollard and Zeke Berry. Mark it down. Yeah. Star goes with Trey. Pierce. Yeah, I, I tell you a guy that Denny, I'm hoping when I go there and we look and we put that spring game on and we see big Greg Crippen out there, 
fourth year player. Mm. I'm hoping that he is doing really good things, that he's moving people and that we're getting Ulu uh, Nugent type center play. That's, that's really what I'm hoping for at that, because it doesn't look like we're bringing in, in a center. We're going by what we're going with what we got. So, you know, I'm hoping that that's, that's really a position. I'm hoping that that kid really looks good in the spring. How many days till kickoff? Well, we need our specialist to come in. It is the last day of August. So what do we have? Like a week left in February. <laughs> we have six months still before kickoff, but. Uh, the the spring game is on 420. It's an easy thing to remember. April the 20th, and we're sitting here on the 21st of February, March, April. Two months, less than two months. Well, that's a spring game. Spring if, game, yeah. If they start that's, practice. That's a season. They probably start practice in three weeks, a month from now. So, yeah. so that's how do we space we, that out? What well, it, it's not yeah. necessarily. A, it's about a month earlier, though. Really. Yeah. Anyway, right? these guys are. They're getting ready. There's players on that football team that are getting ready for a, a, the, the, you know the most important spring for all of them, for a lot of them. It's like make or break it for some of these kids, man. You know they have because there, there's competition at so many positions, and uh, they they got to get their body strong. They're going through conditioning now, and there's a you know there's a lot of excitement. You think that young strength uh, training staff is fired up? They yes, lost they Ben Herbert. You think these guys are, are are laying around saying, "Oh man, we lost Ben," or you think they're chopping at the bit, hammering these players, fired up? I guarantee you, if I replace Ben Herbert, you know, we're not going to feel sorry for ourselves that this guy's gone. There's there's gonna there's a motivated group down there, man. Scar, if you're you're sitting at the po poker table and it's the very first hand, and two guys in front of you put all of their chips in and you peek down and you've got a, a an ace king suited what are you doing are you you going all in, with in them? Benny. always you um you know i mean it depends on the players some guys are not some guys are what's your first hand so you don't really have a read on them well, you don't know well, if they're okay, if balls got, most of the guys i play with i know what they do you know we know what they're doing. after a while you know guys but if i don't know you know more than likely i might i'm gonna probably jump in but uh me too me too. You, know, you got to know the scouting report. Denny, playing poker is a lot like the, uh, coordinating a defense and coordinating an offense. You know, you, you know, what's the down and distance? How much money has he got in front of him? How much money do I have? You know, what are my odds of making this hand? What are, you know, you're, what's the win condition? What's the score of the game? You know, where's the ball? It's on this hash. What's he like to do on that hash? What's he like to do, uh, you know, inside the 20? What, what, you know, you're thinking about all them things and it's a lot like poker. There's, 50 things going through your mind and you got to make a decision in about like 10 seconds. I like it. I, I really do. Good job. Well, we've got um, old moose with the last question in here. He's going over Stuart grant, Graham, Johnson, page more house, but all coming back on D. I love the Michigan is done talk. We might take a step back this year, but we are far. I, from I have no idea why you would think we'd take a step back. I, hell, hell no on defense. And let, let's let's see how these quarterbacks do because uh, the, the talent on that offense. And let's see how these quarterbacks do. Don't forget, we won with Kate McNamara, Denny. I'm an over out on that. These guys, that guy wasn't no, you know, he was a good, smart kid, threw some good passes, but he didn't run around any away from anybody. You know, if, if we got if we got quarterbacks that control the low, you know, the high percentage, low risk stuff, secure the ball, you know, and give us some run game stuff. That's what good coaches do, Danny. You take what you got. You ain't got the same thing every year. You got to you got to make it work with what you got. So that's what you know. Hopefully, Sharon and uh, Campbell they say this is what we got. We can we can win with this. And they went fifteen to zero and won it all. So I, it, <laughs> it's hard. They probably are going to take a step back somewhere. They could lose a game, still get into the college football playoff, maybe get to the the championship game that that's all going to be determined. Plus they have a murderous schedule. And they have to replace the entire offense. Why, why talk? Like, why, ex, why expect that we're going to take a step back to hell with no, that? We're not we're expecting it. No, we ain't taking no step back. Hit the ground running. Be Texas. We're, on we're September coming out 7th. swinging, man. We're Michigan. Coming man. out swinging. I like that kind of okay, talk. So I'm not buying that. Take a step back. BS. Give me another guarantee. 
We ain't stuck taking no step back. We're coming out swinging. A try guarantee from from Scar. That's right. I'm fired up, Danny. It's yes, all good, you man. You brought it. Great job, Scar. All Can't right, wait Danny, to talk with you blue. again. See you later. There he is, Jim.